excerpts from the Kyogyo Shinsho. 28. A collection of passages revealing the transformed Buddha bodies and lands that are provisional means of the Pure Land Way. Compiled by Gutaku Shinran, disciple of Shakyamuni. Passage 14. Thus, contemplating the understanding, the master of Shiryu Ganin. I find that, he reveals, in, chapter on witness to the Nembutsu, that the 18th vow, is, the special vow, among all, Amida's special vows. He states, exhorting the beings, of the meditative, and non-meditative practices, taught in the contemplation sutra. People of extreme evil, should simply say, the name of Amida, this means that monks, and laypeople, of this defiled world, should well consider their own capabilities. Reflect on this. 15. Question. Are the three minds taught in the larger sutra and those taught in the contemplation sutra the same or different? Answer. When I consider the sutra of contemplation on the Buddha of immeasurable life, Taking into account the interpretation of the commentator Shantao, I find there is an explicit meaning and an implicit, hidden, inner meaning. Explicit refers to presenting the meditative and non-meditative good acts and setting forth the three levels of practicers and the three minds. The two forms of good and the three types of meritorious acts, however, are not the true cause of birth in the fulfilled land further. The three minds, that beings awaken, are all minds of self-benefit, that are individually different, and not the mind that is single, which arises from, Amida's benefiting of others. They are roots of good, with which to aspire for the pure land, that, Shakyamuni Tathagata taught, as a distinct, provisional means. This is the import of the Sutra. It is, its, explicit, meaning implicit refers to disclosing the Tathagata's universal vow and revealing the mind that is single to which practicers of the three minds are led through Amita's benefiting of others through the opportunity brought about by the grave evil acts of Devdutta and Ajata Satru Shakyamuni with a smile disclosed his inner intent through the condition brought about, by the right intention, in Vaidehi's selection, Amida's primal vow of great compassion, was clarified. This is the hidden, implicit meaning, of the Sutra. Thus, regarding the implicit meaning, the Sutra states, enable me to perceive the place, established through pure acts. Place, established through pure acts refers to, the fulfilled land, established through the primal vow. Teach me how to concentrate my thoughts. To concentrate thoughts, is a matter of provisional means. Teach me genuine acceptance, refers to, the true mind, that is diamond-like. Clearly perceive, the one in that land, who is accomplished pure acts. Perceive, and know, the Tathagata, fulfilled through the primal vow, the Tathagata of unhindered light, filling the ten quarters. Expound fully, with many illustrations, refers to, the thirteen meditative practices. You are a foolish being. Your mind is inferior. Here, it is disclosed that, Vaidehi, is the person, suited for the teaching of birth, for evil beings. The Buddha Tathagatas, possess distinct provisional means. It is revealed, that meditative, and non-meditative good acts, are provisional teachings. Through the Buddha's power, I have seen that land, expresses other power. Sentient beings, after the Buddha's demise. Sentient beings of the future, are the very beings, who attain birth. Even if, what you have seen, corresponds with, the Sutra. It is to be called, 
rough perception. This reveals that, meditative practice, is difficult to accomplish. While in this present existence, you attain Nambutsu Samadhi. This explains, concerning the benefit, obtained through accomplishing meditative practice. That attainment of Nambutsu Samadhi, is the benefit of contemplation. In other words, the gate of contemplative practice, is a provisional teaching. It is stated, awakening the three minds, they attain immediate, or, provisional birth. Further, again, there are three kinds of sentient beings, who will definitely attain birth. According to these passages, there are, in relation to the three levels of practicers, three different kinds, of three minds, and also, two kinds of birth. Truly, we see from the above, that this sutra has, an explicit meaning, and an implicit, hidden, inner meaning. I will discuss, the sameness and differences, of the three minds, in the two sutras. This matter, must be carefully understood, in their explicit meanings. The larger sutra, and the contemplation sutra differ, in their implicit meaning, they are one. Reflect on this.